Hey gamers, today we're going to look at Crusaders, Thy Will Be Done. Let's check it out. To set up the game, what you're going to have is you're going to have each player is going to take the little player pawn. They're going to put, put them in these little spots where you see the little knight. Um, you do want to make sure if this is a two to four player game, this is the two player board. It's indicated right here at the top. You can flip it over for a three to four player game. It'll tell you how many victory points you have to put out too. So you put out those victory points here. Leave some reserve here as well. You're going to shuffle these little brown tokens here and deal them out across the board where you see the outline there. You're also going to do the same for the three types of enemies you'll be fighting during the Crusades. The Saracens, the Prussians, and the Slavs here. And you'll just randomly put them out wherever you see that little uh, flag there. You'll put them there. And then at, you also put out some game ending conditions uh, for most and second most defeated of each one of these armies over to the side by their little tracks. Speaking of their tracks, the Slavs and the Prussians each have a little marker there to indicate their strength and they start off at three. The Saracens are always a six, which is why you see that six there. Now, in addition to that, each player is going to get a little player aid that they really don't need because the game is really, really simple to figure out. They'll also be dealt some Crusader cards. They'll, they'll pick a Crusader, and let's say they pick this knight, and they'll just slide into their board just like that. Each one of these knights have a special ability. Uh, it says that on the card. If you want to see more about that, if you're unsure about what the power is, you can check the rule book. But to be honest, the cards e easily tell you uh, what, what each superpower is. Also, you start off with 12 of these little action cubes that you're going to place on these little discs here. And these discs are, you know, uh, you can tr move them around. So you'll just set up your little disc board here and then put two of the action cubes on each one. There are some knights that come with extra action cubes. If so, you'd put an extra action cube out there. You have all of your buildings here that you'll place by their icons, even knights here or next to those little knight icons. This board could not be simpler. Uh, also, you have your little army men that you're going to be flipping over to get uh, better at uh, wars. You'll line them up uh, in their flags, one through five at the top. They just fit right in those little spots, just like that. Everything is really nice. And by the way, uh, the cardboard is super thick. This is some high quality stuff here. So how do you play the game? Well, this is very, very, very simple. It's kind of like a Rondell meets Macala. I'll tell you what I mean. First off, one of the actions that you can do, you can do an action each turn. Everyone ta takes turns doing one action each. One of your actions can be upgrading one of these tokens on the wheel. What I mean by that is you can just flip it over for your turn and there you go. You just upgrade your wheel from doing one action to two actions. Now, if you look here, at first I could only travel, but when I upgrade it, from now on I can either travel or do a crusade or do both. How I would do that is I would just, let's say I had a few of these out here, I would allocate the action cubes to each corner to indicate what I'm going to do. So I'm going to travel one and I'm going to battle with a crusade power of two right there. Probably wouldn't be smart, but anyway, uh, that's what you can do. You can also upgrade. Now, if you want to know what's behind that tile, you don't have to flip it up and look at it. At the tip of each one of the side A's, of these uh, triangles here, it'll tell you what's underneath it and when you flip it over what you'll be upgrading it to. But that's one of your actions is to upgrade one of your wheels to make your moves, well, give you more versatility and of course make your moves more powerful. Another thing you can do is you can travel. And how you do that, let's say I pick this guy here and I travel. So first off, I have two action cubes on there. That means my little purple dude can travel up to two spaces. So I can go one, two and make it up there. Now let's say later on in the game, maybe I had two knights here. I could split those two action tile to one and two up like that if I wanted to. Now once I do that, what I have to do since I use the travel action, I have to take these cubes and then distribute them out around the board in a clockwise manner. Now there are some cases where this one says, hey, 
I can distribute them in clockwise or counterclockwise manner, whichever one I like. But that's my special ability, not everyone has that. But usually you're gonna do it in clockwise order, which as you see, gives you more power on future moves. And again, if I was to do this next move, let's say, uh, let's go ahead and do it. Let's say I was gonna do a muster. What is a muster here? Well, a muster means I can flip over and get some backup from one of my army. Now, if you look at the personal player board down there, it will actually tell you what the cost is for each one. I love it because it's super simple here. As you see, it has three hexagons here, which means it is a three. I have to have a muster of three. Well, thankfully I do. So I can flip that over. Now, a few things will happen. First off, I'll get the victory points equal to the number on the flag, which in this case is one victory point. So I take one victory point uh, from the uh, top of the board and add it to my own little victory point pile. But also, this is gonna give me a bonus icon, help during the Crusades. So I'll get a plus one in the Crusades. If you see here, I am a three. Well, no, if I fight, I would also be a four because I got this emblem released. And so when you muster, you're basically just mustering up your army and getting better at battles. But because I mustered, again, I would have to distribute these in clockwise manner unless I had a special ability, then I could do it backwards. So you can kind of see how this is kind of going. As you're moving around, you're dropping these action cubes into other actions, creating a more powerful action on the next turnaround. What does influence mean? Influence basically just gives you victory points. So if I had three in here, I'd go one, two, three, and I would take out three more victory points from the top of the player board and add them to my stash. What about building? Well, you can build equal to the amount of tokens that you have on that cube. Now, again, look how easy it is to read these buildings here. So for instance, let me put my knight back here. <laughs> if I built a castle, you have to build from left to right, by the way. I can't start by building one of these on the edge here. So anything here costs three, and you can see that by the little, and it's just, it's shaped just like the action cube too, that little uh, octagon there. And so you can take any of these little things and buy them for three, and let's say I bought a castle. When I buy a castle, in this case, it would un 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 unlock a knight and let me put it on the board. And each one can give you different abilities. Now there's a symbol there that tells you what it is, but you can also look down here. It says, hey, you get a plus one. If once I get this castle out of the way, if I unlocked another, ca built another castle, then I get a plus one every time I took a travel action. Uh, again, it is super simple to understand because wherever you go, this one says, hey, a plus one to uh, influence. And there's the influence icon just in case you don't know how to read. Uh, very simple to learning how to build. Now, going back to the board though, the board does offer you discounts and rewards for building certain things. So for instance, if you look at the main board here, uh, if you built on the place where, you know, this is where we all started, uh, this guy would get a minus one discount for a church or a government building. So instead of paying three for that first one, he would only have to pay two. With me, my discount would be on a barn or a castle. Now, moving back, there are the, some of these little brown tokens that I talked about in the game. And if you were to get there and unlock one of them, let's say I unlock this one, this one here gives me a minus one on a barn and a victory point if I built it. Uh, as you see, very self-explanatory, each one of these. And of course, there are several, they're all different. Uh, some of them, uh, this one gives you a victory point for a barn or a castle. Uh, some of them give you, uh, you know, discounted prices to build whatever. So not only are you, you know, getting points here on the board, but you're also unlocking things from your player board, which is going to make uh, you way more powerful in the game because this is kind of like engine building here. Uh, the more buildings you build, the more powerful you will be in other actions because some can give plus ones. Of course, these guys give. If you muster, it's going to give you more power in Crusades. Uh, this, if you build a barn, it's going to give you more power to muster. I mean, it's, it really uh, reflects back and balances out your game, making each move more and more impactful. Now, I, I keep talking about Crusades. What is a Crusade? Well, when you go on a Crusade, you're in one of these three areas, and you've got to uh, uh, beat or be at least equal with the number on the track. So at first, Prussians and Slavs are at three. So if I was going to on a crusade, I had four, well that's plenty. So I'd mark these, distribute them out, of course, and then I would grab this token. Now once I do that, I'd add it to my little playing area, and then since that was the Prussians I beat, I'd move them up one. 
Now, as you see, now they're a power of four. Now, I should also mention, I'm gonna get victory points equal to the number uh, what they were. So in this case, I would have gotten three more victory points for being the Prussians. Next person who beats the Prussians, they're gonna get four victory points. And then the marker's gonna move up to five and so on and so forth. Same thing with the Slavs. Now with the Saracens, you only get, they're a power of six every time, but you don't get six points. You only get three points. And it says that on the board there. You only get three victory points, but you, what you also get is the little bonus. And each one of these comes with different bonuses on there. This one is, oh, a free church. I can build a free church here. So they come with bonuses as well, which is why they don't give you as many victory points. Now, at the end of the game, like I said, you're gonna add up who got you know, defeated the most of each one of these armies and the second most, and then you're gonna divide those points or, you, or give those points out. For instance, the person who defeated the most at the end of the game gets five points, and this is for everyone. And you know, if they do, whoever was the second most gets two points. And it's the same for the Prussians and the Slavs. You do this for each one, whoever had the most. If there was ever a tie at the end of the game, you flip this over, and the tied players for the most would get three. If there's a tie for second, the tied players, and it says here, would just get share one each. Uh, so that those are in-game points there, but that's why you want to kind of go out on crusades. Not to mention, you'll be unlocking other little places that may give you victory points or discounts for certain buildings. And all these buildings, of course, will add up into victory points as well. You'll be moving around the board. The game is going to end when you run out of the reserve here that you set aside for victory points. Once that happens, you're gonna finish out the round and anyone else needing victory points will grab them from the reserve here. After that is done, then you will do your final scoring, any other uh, you know, in-game scoring like adding up the armies, and whoever has the most points wins. Final thoughts, what do I think about the game? Wow, it is incredible. What a great game. When I got this, I thought, oh man, this is gonna be a really busy game. There's gonna be, uh, it's gonna take forever to figure out. It, you know, the game's gonna take super long. No, we finish in under an hour. In fact, every time I've played this with four players, we always finish in under an hour. It is surprisingly simple, but very diverse. There's a lot of decisions going on in here. There's a lot of thinking you have to make like, ooh, I wanna do this, but how can I get more action cubes on this space? Cause I wanna do this one next. So I, I guess I'll do this one for right now. And don't forget about upgrading those tiles. Upgrading those tiles is very important. The first time we played, I totally forgot to upgrade tiles. I was like, wait a minute, I can start upgrading tiles. And I started doing that and man, it turned my game around for me. I was starting to, cause you can do combos on some of those cards. Like you can do two actions on one tile if you get, get enough built up. And plus it just gives you more variety when you're choosing. And that those tiles, you know, can be shifted around the board. Your game will always be different. Uh, the, probably my one complaint is the game doesn't go on long enough, which is a good complaint to have, right? Uh, the special abilities from all the knights, I haven't played with all of them, but a lot of them are really neat. I think they're kind of well balanced out that way. You definitely want to build. Building is so important. At first, like, oh, I'm not building unless, you know, this, this tile here offers me a victory point or they give me a discount. Well, if they give you a discount, you should definitely build. But you should build everywhere because building really builds up your engine, your player board, and suddenly mustering, doing crusades, you know, moving, everything you become better at. Uh, so that was a big mistake the first time I played. We, we hardly built anything. The second time I saw one guy he started building tons of stuff I was like oh he's wasting his he's wasting his time he needs to go out further so he can get discounts and victory points and no he ended up killing us because he had everything unlocked on his board and at the end of each one of those rows is basically uh, victory points ways to score game ending victory points really really fantastic game I, I I just don't have anything negative to say about it should you get it yeah go ahead oh man the cardboard in this is so thick it's so chunky it's a weighty game it, it feels great the pieces look nice the artwork looks nice yes this is a keeper proud to have this one in my collection all right gamers that's all the time I have for now until next time crusade on